afternoon. Please remain standing for our national anthem, after which we ask you be seated for the invocation by Dennis Yeary using Native American flute. Oh, Jose, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch with so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in their gay proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave. And the land of the free and the home of the
Good afternoon. My name is Tom Legrand, and I have the honor and the privilege of being chairman of Dutchess Community College Board of Trustees. And I want to welcome everybody to Dutchess Community College. This is a special occasion for us, the inauguration of our institution's fifth, fifth president, Dr. Pamela Eddington. And I'm so delighted that so many students, faculty, staff, community members, dignitaries from other colleges and State University of New York, elected officials, as well as family Pamela's, Pamela's family members and friends and friends and supporters of Dutchess Community College came to celebrate with us today or are watching the process via live video stream. This is a special and historic day for Dutchess Community College, Dutchess County, and of course, Dr. Eddington. The fact that this 58-year-old institution that started as one single building on this campus has had just four presidents is a testament to the depth of commitment that each president had to this institution. We are grateful for all the tremendous contributions made by Presidents Hall, Conley, Lee, and David Conklin, and are confident that Dutchess Community College will continue its tradition of excellence under the stewardship of their successor, Dr. Pamela Eddington. Finding just the right person to assume the leadership of this beloved and highly regarded institution was a collaborative endeavor that I'm proud to say was commended by SUNY and involved sh stakeholders from throughout the campus, our community, and the general public. Our national search attracted many strong candidates, but Dr. Eddington was the clear choice, winning the hearts, minds, and souls of those who participated in the screening and selection process. Quite frankly, Dr. Eddington was the right fit for Dutchess Community College. I encourage you to read Pamela's impressive bio in the program, but when it's over and you get to meet her and work with her, as many of us have and I do on a daily basis, you realize that her authenticity, intelligence, warmth, and sharp focus on students, collaboration, and community engagement really become evident. In the short time she's been here, she's dedicated to our students and dedicated to the community. She will make a difference in this campus and in the community. She's a visionary who has energized our campus and together with faculty, staff, students, and local partners has already advanced several initiatives at the college and within our community. Pamela believes that when you have smart, dedicated people working together towards shared goals, there's nothing that can't be accomplished. And we're seeing evidence of that on a daily basis. Dr. Eddington is a bridge builder, one who creates linkage between individuals and organizations to advance the greater good for all. You'll hear more about this as this program continues, and I want to extend my personal congratulations and those of the Board of Trustees to Pamela on her inauguration, and thank you for being here to witness the beginning of this new chapter in the history of Dutchess Community College. And I do want to give a special thanks to Chairman McCall for taking the time to come here. Now it gives me great pleasure to introduce Dr. Sherry Wesley, Secretary of the Dutchess Community Board of Trustees, who will serve as today's Master of Ceremonies. Thank you very much. <laughs> Dr. Wesley. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> Thank you. In keeping with our name, our mission, and the priorities of our president, Community is a vital part of this event. Community denotes reciprocal and evolving relationships that serve to elevate all of us. Community is a fitting hallmark for the unique gifts of our president. As part of the State University of New York system, 
Dutchess Community College is part of one of the strongest communities of public higher education in the nation. We are honored that the chairman of the trustees of the SUNY system, H. Carl McCall, and I will add a Dutchess County resident, is with us this afternoon. Chairman McCall. <clears throat> Sherry, thank you very much for that gracious introduction, and uh, I am just delighted to be here. Particularly, it's good to be here so close to home. Uh, I want to salute uh, Chairman Legrand and the members of the Board of Trustees for the leadership they have provided for this, to this institution and for their role in selecting such an outstanding new leader. I want to congratulate and thank for being here and for their support, the presidents from other SUNY colleges who are here, and of course to our elected officials and public officials, and particularly to your outstanding county executive, Mark Molinari. And you know, if you want to know what county executives do, they've got a lot of responsibilities, but they're also in charge of the weather, and he really produced today. <laughs> <laughs> I am honored to be here as the campus embarks on the next exciting chapter in their history, marked by the inauguration of a new leader. This is a wonderful time to be at Dutchess Community College, where community is truly in the center of everything you do. Most of your students come from this area, they have families in this area, and when they graduate, they tend to continue to live and work in this area, contributing to the enhancement of the region, engaging in civic economic and social development, and really making a contribution to the fabric of Duchess. I can think of no better leader to carry forth, forth this vision of the future of this campus. As everyone here knows, Dr. Pam Eddington has dedicated her professional career to transforming the lives of others through community college education. Her work is nationally recognized and the ideas and enthusiasm that she brings to this position will propel Duchess to greater excellence and success in the future. Yes, she is posi as positioned at the center of Hudson Valley. This is a unique institution, a unique position to partner with business and industry, travel and tourism entities, and to develop a stellar student experience. Over the last six years, I have had the pleasure of working with the Chancellor of the State of New York, Nancy Zimfer. Over the six years, she has nominated to our board 64 college presidents. So I guess we know something about what to look for in a college president. And Pamela Eddington has all of those qualities of leadership, of vision, vision integrity, intellect, a real commitment to students, and an appreciation for faculty. Yes, I have spent time here in Dutchess, and I know the people and the traditions that are important here. Dr. Eddington will ensure that these traditions are not only upheld, but will help them create new traditions that will carry forward and bring this region to prominence in New York State and beyond. I am happy to be part of this celebration today, and I want to close by thanking everyone here for their support of the State University of New York, of Dutchess Community College, and of Dr. Pam Eddington. Dr. Eddington, congratulations. You truly are Dutchess's new beacon of vision, of hope, and of action. Thank you, and let's and rest, enjoy the rest of this great program. Thank you, Chairman McCall. The bond between our president and our students was immediate. Her continual emphasis on student achievement constantly reminds us that students are at the core of everything we do. This afternoon, our students are represented by the president of our Student Government Association and student trustee, Zoe Cosma. Zoe? Hi, everybody. 
Um, thank you for coming to this awesome event. As you've heard, my name is Zoe Cosma, and I am the president of student government and student trustee on the board of trustees here at DCC. So I want to start off by telling you all that I worked really hard on an introduction to this speech. But then I realized that I really just wanted to dive right into it, because Dr. Eddington is seriously just that awesome. And when I was told that I was given the chance to speak at this event, I got so excited. There was so much that I could say, but I promise not to steal too much of your time. When I express my excitement to you, it's not just limited to me. I have had the joy of working closely with Dr. Eddington throughout her time at Duchess, but I represent the entire student body when I say that our president rocks and we are so happy to have her in our DCC family because that's what we have here at Duchess. We have a family, and Pamela encourages and partakes in that every chance she gets. Students recognize her and light up when they see her on campus. And when you think about it, it's actually quite beautiful that we have such a wonderful connection between the administration and the students here. There is one thing that Dr. Eddington and I have super in common, though, and that would be presidency. <laughs> she is the president <laughs> of Duchess. <laughs> Sorry, I, I think I'm funny too. Um, <laughs> she's the president of Duchess and I'm the president of student government. And there's one thing that I wanna get across to you all for sure today. And that is that more than anyone else on this campus, Dr. Eddington has inspired me. She has from the very beginning. And I remember the day that I met her. I still have the picture hanging in my office and the smile on my face, I just I can't replicate it. I was so excited. I felt the inspiration hit me like a tidal wave. And every single time that I faced hardships, and let me tell you something that people may not tell you about presidency, there are a lot of hardships, like all time. <laughs> um, each time that I faced one that made me doubt whether or not I could make it through, I thought of Dr. Eddington. You have no idea how many times I told myself, Zoe, if Dr. Eddington can do this, you can do it too. <laughs> And you have no idea how many hard days and situations that line got me through. I've looked up to Dr. Eddington a lot, and I know that I'm not the only student on the campus that has. And this is not just because she does such a great job. It's not just because she is an amazing, strong woman in power. It is not just because she has amazing leadership capabilities. And it is not just because I, just like so many other students, consider Dr. Eddington my friend. It is because she is Pamela Eddington. She is an amazing woman, and she serves as an inspiration to the entire student body and every single person she meets. I'm honored and delighted that she is here with us and that we get to celebrate her today. So thanks for being you, Dr. Eddington. And thank you, Zoe. Somehow I suspect there are other presidencies to come for her. <laughs> a community college is itself made up of many parts. In addition to students, administrators are often where the needs of the various parts intersect. Speaking on behalf of Duchess Community College administrators, I am happy to introduce Dr. Ellen Gambino, Vice President of Academic Affairs. I have heard um, Dr. Eddington say more than once that it's never good to follow Zoe, and, <laughs> and now I know how she feels. <laughs> President Eddington, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, students, and distinguished guests, I'm delighted to bring greetings from my colleagues in the administration on this awesome, auspicious occasion. I'm channeling Zoe. Oh. <laughs> Andrew Carnegie said, the best means of benefiting the community is to place within its reach the ladders upon which the aspiring can rise. For more than 50 years, Duchess Community College has provided those ladders to success to each of the many diverse groups that the college serves. 
Under the leadership of Pamela Eddington, however, we are not only providing ladders, but we are also building and strengthening bridges. We are building stronger bridges to our students, guided by Dr. Eddington's laser focus on student success. Inspired and led by her commitment to community and to service, we are building new bridges to local government, to local businesses, and to the nonprofit groups that serve Dutchess County. Dr. Eddington is deeply and sincerely committed to galvanizing the college's resources, to work with the many communities we serve, and to assist individuals in achieving their personal and educational goals. Malcolm X told us, education is our passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to the people who prepare for it today. Pamela Eddington has clearly articulated her vision and demonstrated her commitment to lead DCC at this time in its history. Dr. Eddington, I know I speak for my colleagues in the administration when I tell you that we are inspired and energized and look forward to facing the challenges of the future under your capable leadership. It's now my distinct pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Andrew Scala, Professor of Biology at DCC since 1990 and the 2010 recipient of the Chancellor's Award for Excellence in Teaching. Thank you very much, Dean. Good afternoon, everyone. What a beautiful, beautiful day. Dr. Eddington, members of the Board of Trustees, faculty, students, distinguished guests. It's my honor and privilege and, uh, to bring you greetings and sal salutations from the faculty of Dutchess Community College. As faculty, we partner to continue with you uh, Pat, doc, Dr. Reddington, to continue the solemn duty of celebrating day, uh, the future daily in our classrooms and laboratories through our work with our students. As faculty, we join with you to celebrate the small daily victories of education for our students. And it, that includes learning new skills, understanding challenging concepts, that's a tough one, practicing empathy, as well as long, hard-fought challenges, such as earning Dean's List honors, getting an internship, and walking the stage at commencement. In education, the future is created every day. By leveraging a variety of instructional methods, faculty tailor a results-driven education to our students. From the very first day to graduation, we shape, grow, and design not only the future of our current students, but those of Dutchess Community College students to come. Therefore, Dr. Eddington, the faculty are proud and honored to partner with your vision of transformational leadership in shaping and growing the future. With a continued commitment of respect, trust, collegiality, and dedication to the mission of Dutchess Community College. On behalf of the faculty, Dr. Reddington, it is my honor to extend to you a warm congratulatory welcome as we look forward to jointly celebrating many tomorrows to come. Thank you, Dr. Reddington. The next speaker will be Ms. Yvonne Flowers, who will bring greetings from the DCC support staff. Good afternoon. It's an honor to be here, and I want to thank the Board of Trustees for giving me the opportunity to speak on behalf of the DCC support staff. Dr. Eddington, we want to welcome you and officially congratulate you for becoming the next president of Dutchess Community College and also our first woman president. <laughs> I had the privilege of meeting Dr. Eddington uh, while serving on the Presidential Search Committee and I was immediately impressed with her. I admired her thoughts on how she envisioned Dutchess Community College positive impact on the city of Poughkeepsie and surrounding communities. 
She stressed the value of community involvement, the importance of diversity, and ensuring that our college reflects the community it serves. She noted that every person on campus contributes to student and college success. From day one since Dr. Eddington came on campus, we realized that she is not a woman who just talks the talk. She is a woman of action. She wanted to ensure that we maintain a culture of inclusiveness and transparency, and that is exactly what she's doing. Dr. Eddington, we appreciate the opportunities and encouragement you have given support staff to get involved in campus activities committees and be a part of the process in transforming our college to meet future demands. Your sincerity and inspiration has helped support staff members work toward having an active voice on campus and we truly appreciate your efforts. The old saying is, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, it takes a village to educate our students and we all, faculty, staff, community stakeholders, business partners, and board members are part of that village. In order to get through the challenging times that await DCC, we have to work together and respect and appreciate each other's differences, thoughts, and ideas. I'm excited to know that we have a college president leading this institution who truly believes in that concept. Dr. Eniton, on behalf of DCC support staff, we look forward to working with you as we continue to maintain the integrity of this college and continue to help transform our students to become the inspiring and exceptional leaders in our diverse society. Thank you. And thank you, Yvonne. Dutchess Community College is proud of its many programs in the visual, performing, literary and media arts. We offer experiences that encourage students to share their talents and hone their skills through performance. For musicians, creative outlets include orchestra, band, and ensemble opportunities, one of which is the DCC Jazz Ensemble. The DCC Jazz Ensemble is open to all students and community members. Many of its members are part of the Performing Arts Associate and Music Performance Certificate Program, where they can study music theory, oral skills, history, and also take private lessons. With us this afternoon are members of the DCC Jazz Ensemble under the direction of Dr. Christopher Bellux and featuring Adway Johnson. <laughs> Walking along, minding my business, when out of the orange colored sky, flash, bam, alakazam, wonderful you came by. I was humming a tune, drinking in sunshine, when out of that orange colored view, flash, bam, alakazam, I got a look. One look and I yell, Timber, watch out for flying glass. Cause the ceiling fell in and the bottom fell out. I went into a spin and I started to shout. I've been hit. This is it. This is it. I was walking along, minding my business. When love came and hit me in the eye. Flash, bam, alakazam. Out of an orange colored sky. One look and I yell, Timber, watch out for flying glass. Cause the ceiling fell in and the bottom fell out. I went into a spin and I started to shout. I've been hit. This is it. This is it. I was walking along, minding my business. When love came and hit me in the eye. Flash, bam, alakazam, out of an orange. 
colored purple stripe Pretty green polka dot sky Flash, bam, alakazam And goodbye Thank you Thank you, Dr. Bellux. Thank you, Adjua. As you might imagine, Dr. Eddington has received congratulatory messages from a number of elected officials and public figures. Each and every one is greatly appreciated. I especially want to note one from Dr. Jill Biden, a strong advocate of community colleges and wife of Vice President Joe Biden, who sent messages reinforcing our connection to the national network of community colleges and their importance to overall nation. We here in Dutchess College, in Dutchess County, have a county government that's very supportive of our, our efforts. The county executive is a member of our community, both professionally and personally. The county of Dutchess is our sponsor and an essential part of the college's success. We're also proud to note that the current county executive, like his predecessor, is a graduate of our college and a member of the DCC Hall of Fame. I'm pleased to present the Dutchess County Executive, Marcus Molinaro. As if following Zoe isn't tough enough. I get to follow the jazz ensemble. <laughs> uh, Dutchess Community College uh, as an institution uh, embodies uh, this community's rich history, uh, its great talent, uh, all of its uh, struggles and all of its successes. And Dr. Eddington, you are the newest heir to the legacy and tradition that this college has proudly protected preserved and improved upon. But you are also, however, our community's promise to those students here today and the future generations of Dutchess Community College students who will depend on this institution's commitment to excellence, this institution's commitment to thought and innovation and creativity, and this institution's role in our greater community. And we can't think of a better woman to hold dear to that promise. Dutchess County as a government uh, welcomes you. I personally welcome you. Uh, but more than congratulating you on uh, today's ceremony and uh, your newest role, I also want to speak on behalf of Dutchess County government and commit to you our partnership, our friendship, and our cooperation. The success of Dutchess Community College is very much the success of Dutchess County. And Dr. Eddington, you are an amazing steward. And for that, we look forward to great success and great partnership together. I too will not forget the first time I met you. With a glimmer in your eye and a bit of a flourish, the woman swept the place clean and began a new chapter of energy, enthusiasm, commitment, and professionalism. And for that, all of Dutchess County says thank you. May God continue to bless you in all of your work, and most of all, let us continue to work together for the betterment of this great community of ours. Congratulations. In Dutchess County government, the executive and legislative branches work together where the college is concerned. There are legislative liaisons to the college from both caucuses, and the current legislative chairman serves as a member of the trustees. I present the chairman of Dutchess County Legislature and trustee, Robert Rollison. Thank you, 
Thank you, uh, Dr. Wesley, and, and that is true. Uh, Dutchess County government supports this college, and the county executive and I were just talking about that, how the county uh, budget is proposed by the executive and the legislature approves it, and there is never an argument about the budget for Dutchess Community College. But I wanted, I wanted <laughs> there has not been an argument about the, <laughs> not that I remember. Uh, not that I started. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to finish it if it happens, I can tell you that. Uh, but I, I want to I tell you a quick, quick, brief story. So, you know, being on the Board of Trustees, we're going to look for a new uh, college president. I wasn't on the search committee. But, you know, you want to hear a little bit about what's going on. And I have to tell you, the search committee was very quiet, very tight-lipped. That was her instructions. They weren't giving out much information. But one thing that did come out was that there was this person that came before the entire search committee, one person that had the support of everybody right off the bat and made the cut the first time through. Uh, and that was interesting because we're all wondering who that person was. We had no, no idea. So when Dr. Eddington came before the board for the interviews with the final group, we knew. We knew who that person was. Uh, and it was pretty clear, pretty quick, who we wanted to select as the new college president. And then the search committee, representatives of the search committee, came into the board of trustees and said, we're advocating for this person, we want this person, we want this person, we want to say, hey, it's okay, it's done, we're going to pick this person. <laughs> and we did. And uh, we were extremely happy right off the bat. Uh, there was this instant affectionate admiration that I know that the Board of Trustees felt and I heard and I know now more than ever it was throughout the entire college community and I'll tell you a brief story I, I said to Dr. Eddington um, you know maybe would you like to go meet the town supervisor Todd Tancredi who was sitting in the audience and I could take you to my old police department the town of Poughkeepsie uh, who patrols this campus and Eric Hawk and, and, and Buddy Cox are former police officers in the town and lead the security people I said it'd be good to meet them and she says, yeah, let's go. So we go over to the be with the town supervisor. She immediately wants to know, how can we help town government? How can this college help town government? And then we go to the police department, uh, where Tom Morrow, who is the now retiring chief, who was an adjunct up here, and he's, he says to Dr. Eddington, well, we've got so many guys with master's degrees and so many girls with bachelor's degrees and associate's degrees. And Dr. Eddington says, how do we get everybody else a college education? How do we get Dutchess Community College to help train these police officers? Do we bring the college here? Maybe we can do classes here. We'll talk about it. So when we left, that was the theme of our conversation in the short ride back up to this campus. How do we bring this college to our community, our community? How do we educate more students and prepare them to lead productive lives in this community? We talked about the city of Poughkeepsie. We talked about Hyde Park, LaGrange, and different areas of this great county of ours and how we're going to do it and how the Board of Trustees can help in that mission. And it is something that we think about all the time, enrollment, getting people up here on this campus and folks and students that can't get to this campus, including adult education, well, let's bring that campus to them. Let's make sure that Dutchess Community College is that community college times 10 in trying to educate this county. And on behalf of the 25 members of the Dutchess County Legislature, on behalf of me personally, whose son graduated here and went on to be a police officer and some of his instructors are in the audience here this afternoon. Thank you for all the things that, that this college does for this community. And I was, you know, I was looking at the program, you know, and it's so fitting because it's our community, our college, and our future. And we have the president that's going to lead this community college into the future and we couldn't be happier. And Pamela, it's an honor to be up here talking about you today. Thank you very much, everybody. The DCC Foundation is an essential resource for scholarships for our students and for support of important initiatives. Through the foundation, DCC establishes and maintains connections with the broader community, and it is an essential connector with our alumni. The Vice President of the Dutchess Community College Foundation Board and incoming president is with us this afternoon. I'm pleased to introduce Ms. Carol Gordon. Thank you, Sherry. I am just thrilled to be here today. 
I feel as if we've come full circle during what has been a very exciting, productive, and transformative year for our college. Just 12 short months ago, I was serving on the Presidential Search Committee, representing the foundation and the community. Today, I can tell you that it was one of the most enlightening and rewarding experiences that I've ever had in my career. Our charge to choose a leader who would build on the past while propelling us forward was formidable. Representing the foundation, I knew our college president needed to connect, embrace, and respect our community, our donors, our college faculty and staff, and our student needs. We are so fortunate that Pamela was attracted to Dutchess Community College. Through this process, we, along with Pamela, recognized, as she stated, this would be a great marriage. As vice chair of the DCC Foundation, I've had the opportunity to get to know Pamela over these past several months, and I can tell you she is a remarkable and genuine individual who believes in Dutchess Community College and in all of you. You can see the evidence throughout the college and throughout the community. She is everywhere. She is keenly aware of the potential we have as an institution and the privileged position we are in to serve our students and this community. Pamela's admiration for the mission of the foundation is also evident. The foundation provides more than $350,000 a year in student scholarships and supports other initiatives that enhance teaching and learning. I look forward to the opportunity to work with Pamela in my new role, and I am certain that we will reach new heights as we explore opportunities under Pamela's creative, energetic, and forward-thinking leadership. On behalf of the DCC Foundation, I'd like to extend my sincere congratulations to Dr. Pamela Eddington. And thank you, Carol. Dr. Eddington has quickly extended the college re college's relationships with a number of community partners, among them the Eleanor Roosevelt Center at Valkill. By enhancing the ways in which the community partners and the college become we, our college expands opportunities for students and helps people throughout the region both contribute to and benefit from what we do here at Dutchess Community College. Speaking on behalf of our community partners is the Executive Director of the Eleanor Roosevelt Center at Valkill, Kathleen Durham. Good afternoon. I was both honored and proud to have been asked to speak today but I was strategic in my thinking and asked not to follow Zoe. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm going to share my thoughts with you about creating a world of possibility, transformation, and excellence for the communities in which we live. Professor John W. Gardner said, no society can remain vital or even survive without a reasonable base of shared values. Where community exists, it confers upon its members identity, a sense of belonging, and a measure of security. A community has the power to motivate its members to exceptional performance. And community can set standards for expectations for the individual and provide the climate in which great things happen. Life for each of us lives in different communities, each of which requires shared values. There is the community of home, the community of church, the community of work, the community at large, and of course, the community of school. The commonality of each of these communities, no matter the community, is a community of individuals. And as individuals, each one of us has an obligation to develop our physical, 
emotional, intellectual, and spiritual capacities to their fullest so that we can be of service to that community. And why are we obligated to do that? Because we are always present in one of those communities. And excellent communities are only created when each person in the community takes responsibility for developing his or her physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual capacities to the best of their ability. And when this happens, the community and we are made stronger for it. In other words, personal responsibility, not reliance on what they or they are not doing makes the difference in transforming communities. And I say that because we have the lovely Dr. Eddington. Dr. Eddington needs each of us to do our personal best to make sure that this community college continues to do its personal best. I believe Mr. Gardner's belief about um, what he is needed for excellence is reflected in the vision and mission of Duchess Community College, which is Duchess aspires to be an innovative, transformative community of learners that promotes exemplary student success. It offers educational opportunities that prepare individuals to realize their full potential and contribute to a diverse and global society. The college's values of accountability, excellence, collaboration, and diversity are key components for creating a world of possibility, transformation, and excellence. And we at the Eleanor Roosevelt Center at Valkyo share the vision, mission, and values of Dutchess Community College. And we are particularly delighted and honored that we have been the beneficiaries of its talented students and staff through our Eleanor Roosevelt Community College Emerging Leaders Program. Eleanor Roosevelt had a history with Dutchess Community College, and it continues that history through our collaboration and the Excel community. It also continues that history under the enlightened leadership of Dr. Eddington. And I thought, when I read uh, this quote, that there are two quotes that I feel express her leadership. And one was actually made by a man, and I was surprised because parts of it um, actually, um, men generally think we shouldn't do that. <laughs> and I'll leave it to you guys to figure out which part that is. So, and the quote was, no, f no creature can fly with just one wing. Gifted leadership occurs where heart and head, feeling and thought meet. These are the two things that allow a leader to soar. And the second quote by none other than our muse, Eleanor Roosevelt, to handle yourself, use your head, to handle others, use your heart. And in my world, Dr. Ed Eddington soars. Finally, the real secret from me, from my perspective, and I share this with the girls in our program and, uh, and my staff in creating a possibility is that um, it was said by none other than Michael Jackson. You remember him, the glove guy? <laughs> so if you want to make Duchess Community College a place of transformation, possibility, and excellence, if you want the world to be a better place, Take a look in the mirror and make the change. Enjoy the journey. Thank you, Dr. Eddington. And we do thank you, Kathleen. While many of us quickly felt a great confidence in Dr. Eddington's commitment to our college, there are other people who have witnessed the evolution of her beliefs and values, who have seen how she acts on those values over time. One of those people, Dr. Donna Killian Duffy, has been her academic colleague for 31 years. Dr. Duffy is a retired professor of psychology from Middlesex Community College in Massachusetts and is with us this afternoon. Dr. Duffy? From 
almost 30 years, I have known Pamela as a colleague and friend. We shared an office when we began at Middlesex Community College and then had offices next door to each other for all the years that followed. Pamela and I would usually greet each other in the morning and trade stories about our families, events going on at campus, and things happening around the world. We worked on many projects together, learned a great deal from each other, and developed a close and trusting relationship over time. As I was trying to come up with an image to capture Pamela's qualities, I thought about an Ethiopian proverb that we often used when we were doing service learning presentations together. The proverb states, when spider webs unite, they can tie up a lion. I think this proverb captures the essence of Pamela's masterful skills at creating connections among faculty, students, administrators, and the community in very innovative ways. She would always seem to find a partnership in the community or create an initiative at the college that would unite many spider webs together. And from hearing the uh, speakers before me, it sounds like she's uh, busy doing that here already. Um, but in our community, uh, she wrote a grant, a learn and serve grant, uh, to create a new partnership between Middlesex Community College, the Lowell National Historic Park, and Minuteman National Historical Park. Uh, following the grant and the creation of what's known as the Lowell Civic Collaborative, faculty and students are now working regularly with park interpreters. Uh, in addition, the Lowell Civic Collaborative Guidebook, which was created from this project, um, it, it describes projects that are happening or have happened between community colleges and national parks. This resource is on the National Park website. Uh, I've traveled around the country uh, and talked to many students, uh, faculty, and park interpreters who are using this guidebook as a way to start programs in their local settings. Talk about spider webs uniting. The fragile and nearly invisible nature of a spider web represents, for me, Pamela's approach to respecting and honoring the worth of each individual. I have watched Pamela support people in many different ways to gently encourage them to see the strength in making connections. But then, she lets individuals devise their own unique webs and fades into the background so others receive credit for the work. Meeting other faculty in the hallways, I would often hear them say, you know, I had the beginning of an idea and Pamela may helped me to make it happen without telling me how I had to do it. That's important for faculty, for those of you who are in here. <laughs> um, I think the lion image of the proverb reminds me most of Pamela's deep and enduring commitment to the common good. As a psychologist, I tend to focus more on individual issues, but Pamela would always direct me back to the larger societal problems, the lions, such as unemployment, homelessness, <coughs> discrimination, that face many of our students. We all know how hard it is 
to tie up these lions on our own. Pamela is a leader who follows Chief Seattle's advice that whatever we do to the web, we do to ourselves. All things are bound together. I have learned a lot from Pamela's remarkable ability to create strong connections across groups of people, her respect for each individual, and her deep commitment to the common good. Pamela will be a collaborative and caring president who will work hard with all of you to strengthen the webs in and around Dutchess Community College and to help tie up more lions in the years ahead. Thank you, Dr. Duffy. And we do feel those webs. Dr. Eddington would not be the woman, would not be the leader that she is were it not for her family. Among her significant contributions and accomplishments are a 34-year marriage to William Eddington. Bill Eddington has himself had a long, distinguished career in research and administration at several New England institutions of higher education. She is mother to Billy and Claire. Billy Eddington is a digital marketing manager for North America at Soho House. She's also a singer-songwriter who was classically trained and performs regularly throughout New York City. Claire Eddington received her PhD in sociomedical sciences from Columbia University and is an assistant professor of history at the University of Massachusetts, Boston. I'm pleased to present Dr. Claire Eddington. On my first visit to Dutchess Community College last fall, my mother took me on a tour of the different buildings and offices. We got lost. My, my mother excels at many things, but she has a terrible sense of direction. <laughs> As we made our way across the campus, pretending like we knew east from west, I was introduced to dozens of her new colleagues. My mother might not have known where we were going, but she did know everyone's names. The common refrain, besides how much we looked alike, was how much my mother had energized the college in the short time since her arrival. This was not a surprise to me. Something I've always admired about my mom is her ability to see the world from the perspectives of others, to understand the diverse kinds of challenges and hardships they may face, while also imbuing those around her with a sense of optimism and purpose. Her enthusiasm is infectious, and it was clear to me as we rounded the library for perhaps the third time, searching for a <laughs> shortcut across campus, that she had found a new kind of home here. From an early age, my parents instilled in both my sister Billy and I strong values in education and the importance of civic engagement and social activism. My mom lives these principles in her career as an educator and now president of a community college. Her commitment to service learning as a way of combining classroom instruction with outreach to the community reflects a more expansive vision of what education could and should look like. I am just now finishing my first year teaching as an assistant professor of history at the University of Massachusetts, Boston. At least half my students graduated from community colleges or have pursued other more non-traditional paths to a four-year university education. The experience has been uniquely challenging and also incredibly rewarding. I've realized that my role extends well beyond preparing lectures and grading papers. I've come to appreciate that my students are more than just students. They are parents, veterans, employees, volunteers, patients, and community leaders. Some are straight out of high school and others are older than I am. In order for my students to succeed, I need to treat them as a whole person. My mom taught me that and so much more. I was recently described by a colleague and friend as a marshmallow with a spine of steel. And it occurred to me that the same thing could be said about my mother. She is empathetic and ambitious, sweet and serious, unassuming and intelligent, accommodating and a force to be reckoned with. 
My sister and I have always looked up to our mother as a model of how to balance a professional career and motherhood, and to see her achieve a lifelong dream today is a dream come true for us as well. I'm very grateful to have been included as part of the ceremony. Not often is one given the opportunity to honor a parent, and I can't think of a better time than this on the day of her inauguration as president of Dutchess Community College. I love you. This is a great day in the life of Dutchess Community College. We are here to witness a formal rite of passage and a ceremonial induction into an office. On behalf of Dr. Nancy Zimfer, Chancellor of the State University of New York, Vice Chancellor Joanna Duncan Portier will officially bestow the power of the office upon Dr. Pamela R. Eddington. Mr. Legrand and SUNY Chairman McCall will assist. I invite Joanna Duncan Portier to the podium. I have some very important official words to share with all of you. Um, but before I do, I just have to say that we just love Pam. She has um, been at the campus already for a very short period of time, but we feel as if we know her very, very well. Um, as folks were speaking about following Zoe and following the jazz band, oh dear God, following her daughter? <laughs> how beautiful all of the remarks are and how appropriate. Um, I personally all, often think of Pam as a mild-mannered, powerhouse. She is creative, she is innovative, but she is strong. She is going to take this campus to new heights and I congratulate the Board of Trustees on their decision. She is awesome and I am channeling Zoe. <laughs> Our colleagues that are here, the other presidents from uh, the State University of New York are very, very proud to have her as a colleague. And with that, I go to the official words. Dr. Pamela Eddington, you have the most important privilege and responsibility of leading the State University of New York's Duchess Community College, founded in 1957, to the fulfillment of its great promise as one of the premier community colleges in the state of New York. As Chief Executive Officer, you are assigned all powers, duties, and responsibilities appropriate to the post. The Board of Trustees, the Chancellor and I are confident that under your leadership, this institution, pursuing the highest traditions of teaching, scholarship, and public service, will continue its dedication to the great state of New York, to the nation, and to the world. By virtue of the authority vested in me on behalf of the Chancellor of the Board of Trustees of the State University of New York, I now present to you Friends of the college, the fifth president of the State University of New York, Dutchess Community College, Dr. Pam Eddington. All right, can we do the <laughs> for me in the Dutch's mug, tissues. <laughs> Before I actually start my remarks, I have to say, um, since I've been here and I've been on the job for almost 10 months now, 
And, you know, and everything was going really well. And people will keep referring to this honeymoon phase that I'm in. You know, and they sort of like, well, you're in the honeymoon, right? You know, but then today, um, as I was talking to people before the ceremony, people were saying, well, this is really like a wedding. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, got, you had all these people and everything. So, this is, so I got thinking. Uh, uh, honeymoon, wedding, so courtship is next. <laughs> so I'm available for dates. <laughs> That's it. It's the best part. <laughs> I have a pretty vivid imagination, but I could never have imagined anything more meaningful, beautiful, and fulfilling than this moment. To hear all of these people say things ab about me um, uh, really is very humbling. I, I hate to follow every one of them, and to follow them as a group, including our, our wonderful musicians, is, is really more than I can bear. This is a you know a fabulous moment. Um, in a uh, in a couple of weeks, when we graduate a thousand students from Dutchess Community College, it'll be even better. So as far as I'm concerned, this is really the pre-party. <laughs> Right. I'd like to begin by extending my thanks to the platform party, SUNY Board Chair McCall, Vice Chancellor Duncan Portier, DC Board Chair, the best board chair in the state of New York, Tom Legrand, the entire Board of Trustees, and those representing our faculty, staff, students, our foundation, the county, community, friends, and my family. And special thanks to our student musicians for sharing their talents with us. You guys rock. <laughs> You're really fabulous. <laughs> and to the inauguration committee, chaired by Barbara Hugo and Carol Gordon, your careful attention to detail, creativity, and kindness was exceptional. And of course, I'm grateful to every one of you for taking the time to be with us today. Until this moment in time, I thought there was only one circumstance in which you saw your life pass before your eyes, okay? <laughs> now they know there's two, near death and inauguration. <laughs> and I hope I'm right about that because otherwise, <laughs> I think the chair of our nursing program is here. She better check my blood pressure. <laughs> You know, because from my vantage point, I'm seeing my early life, and I'm glad you're kind of in the dark, because if I could actually see my brothers and sisters clearly, I would need those tissues. I'm seeing my early life in the form of all six of my brothers and sisters, Gary, Carlotta, Linda, Dr. Linda, who preceded me in our family, and Jeff, Mary, and Peter, who succeeded me in our family. I am most definitely a middle child. <laughs> My siblings have come from Wyoming, Minnesota, Maryland, and Florida. And truthfully, it's my siblings who know best how far I have come in order to stand here today. That's why we didn't ask them to speak. <laughs> And I trust they won't feel compelled to share family secrets in the reception <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> I can only imagine how proud our parents, Peter and Rose Eddington, who have both passed away, would be to know that I made something of myself. Our father had only an eighth grade education, but he would say that he earned advanced degrees from the University of Hard Work. We learned our work ethic as children from dad. Our mother, Our mother, who had a high school diploma when she married dad, eventually entered college as an adult and ultimately earned a master's degree. We learned from her never to let go of our dreams. Both mom and dad would be thrilled that all seven of their children have had success on their own terms and that we are able to share the joy of this occasion with each other. And then there is the family of my own making. My husband, Bill, who has been the single most <laughs> influential person in my life for 34 years. 
<laughs> and our daughters, Claire and Billy, both are accomplished and kind young women who are on a trajectory to undoubtedly and rightfully surpass their parents' accomplishments. The three of them are simply the loves of my life. I'm also looking at dear, dear friends and colleagues from my previous college experiences in Massachusetts and Connecticut. I'm grateful to every one of you for making the trip to mark this important occasion with me. I owe all of you and so many more past colleagues a debt of gratitude for helping me to become a better educator, a better leader, and a better person. Your collaboration, your inspirations, patience, exceptionally good work, and unfailing support help put me in this position today. And then there are my newest colleagues, faculty, staff, students, trustees, peers, and community members who have embraced my family and me, and pets and all, <laughs> to Dutchess County with generosity and tremendous kindness. And I also want to personally recognize the other college presidents who have welcomed me into their circle. I am delighted to be in your company. Since coming to Poughkeepsie, I was quoted in a local paper saying, no one does it alone. Now you've heard and can see what I mean. Thank you all so very much for what you have done and are doing to support me. That was part one. <laughs> <laughs> The inauguration of a college president is a singular opportunity to reflect on both the history and the future of an institution. I recognize the privilege I have been accorded with, be, to, with the opportunity to be the fifth and, wait for it, the first female president to lead <laughs> Dutchess Community College. I never tire of that. <laughs> And I trust there are many other firsts to come as president of Dutchess Community College. But I'm following in the footsteps of four accomplished presidents, James Hall, John Connolly, Jerry Lee, and D. David Conklin. Each of them has left a lasting legacy in the form of programs established, buildings erected, partnerships advanced, and resources developed. I think more importantly, though, it is the people who are hired during an administration that best represent a president's legacy. I have met scores of the faculty and staff, retired and current, who were hired by my predecessors and who have unselfishly dedicated the majority of their lives to this institution. I have a solid foundation upon which to build and a high bar to reach. It's hard not to slip into hyperbole in describing the impact Dutchess Community College has had on individual lives and this community as a whole. To date, more than 43,000 degrees have been granted and more than 172,000 individuals have earned credits here. When you consider the additional hundreds of thousands who have participated in community service offerings, events, and activities, it's the rare household in this area that has not had direct interaction with our college. Graduates of Duchess have gone on to become artists, social activists, architects, educators, lawyers, judges, nurses, engineers, entrepreneurs, CEOs, teachers, community volunteers, civil servants, and county executives. <laughs> Even a fighter pilot I found out recently who got his start in our aviation program. There are also our police officers and firefighters. And at this time, I'd like us to take a moment to remember Timothy Gunther, a heroic firefighter and former DCC student and SUNY New Paltz graduate who died Monday while battling a fatal fire in the city of Poughkeepsie. On our distinguished alumni wall of fame downstairs are outstanding examples of the talent that has been identified and cultivated at Dutchess Community College over the years. You know them because of their extensive community involvement, and many of them are here with us today. Could I please ask that all Dutchess Community College alumni please stand? 
Look at that. <laughs> More than half of our graduates choose to remain in the Mid-Hudson Valley to live, work, play, and worship. They establish families, raise children, pay taxes, and invest in our community. Imagine how life in Dutchess County would be different had there not been forward-thinking leaders who advocated for the development of a local community college. Significantly fewer people would have been able to pursue a higher education. Those who did go on to college would have paid more and had more debt. There would be fewer businesses, less civic participation, less social mobility, less hope, and fewer dreams fulfilled. Community colleges are invaluable assets that transform the lives of individuals and of entire communities, and I am so proud to work at a community college. The public financial investment in Dutchess Community College is repaid in multiples by the engaged citizenship and economic productivity of our students, alumni, and workforce. Community colleges are an exceptional investment worthy of tax dollars, private philanthropy, and all manner of individual and community support. We are public institutions. We are of the people. We are by the people. We are for the people. And I am also incredibly proud to lead an institution that is part of the State University of New York. As you heard, we are the largest comprehensive public higher education in the country. Under the leadership of Chancellor Zimfer and the SUNY board, the power of our 64 campus system is being leveraged to drive economic growth in New York State. Individually and collectively, our SUNY institutions have a profound and positive impact on the communities we serve. Since coming to Dutchess County and getting to know more about its rich history, I've taken to quoting Hudson Valley notables. Given that the Roosevelts were a family of local importance with lasting impact on the nation and the world, I often hearken back to their ideas and words to guide me. As Kathleen Durham from Val Kill knows, I mostly look to Eleanor Roosevelt for inspiration. And one of the things that Eleanor said that, I'm, that I've quoted is, do something every day that scares you. Well, Eleanor, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> But actually, today I have a quote from the other Roosevelt. Um, pre <laughs> uh, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt once said, I do not look upon these United States as a finished product. We are still in the making. His words seem just as applicable to Dutchess Community College, so now I would like to suggest what's in the making here. In refreshing the college's vision, mission, values, and goals, our campus community recently identified five essential core values that will guide our decision-making going forward. Those values are excellence, access, diversity, collaboration, and accountability. We value excellence because whether a student attends Dutchess Community College as a foundation for additional education, or seeks it out as a pathway for career preparation, or looks to it as a source of ongoing enrichment, ensuring that all students receive an education that contributes to their personal and professional growth remains the litmus test of our success. While the role of president is an important one, I am reminded on a daily basis by our students that it is the faculty and staff who are key to sustaining academic excellence and student success. Just want to give you an example of the kind of dedicated faculty we have. Tomorrow, one of our faculty will travel to a neighboring state at the invitation of a former student who is graduating with his MBA. That they've stayed in touch for 10 years and that he's getting his master's are impressive. But what's truly remarkable is that this student walked here every day from his home in the city of Poughkeepsie, did his homework on the bus, and managed to excel with very few resources. This motivated young man found a DCC, as so many other students do, a caring, committed family that provided an outstanding academic foundation, encouragement, and sometimes even food. He exemplifies the struggles that many of our students face, 
and the successes that can and do happen in our transformative environment thanks to our caring and dedicated faculty and staff. I, yeah. <laughs> Our students are accomplishing things they never thought possible. You may have seen last Sunday's Poughkeepsie Journal, in which we featured students who recently won national recognition in the areas of art, theater, leadership, and science. They're high achievers for sure, but we know that our faculty was instrumental in their success. So now I would like all of our faculty and staff who are here in the audience with us today, please stand so that we can recognize your contribution. Thank you. This is why we recruit educators who have a passion for the community college mission and why we need to ensure they are compensated for their education, experience, and good work, and that we also support their continuous professional growth and renewal. Not yet like that. <laughs> <laughs> Providing access to post-secondary education has always been fundamental to the community college mission. By providing an open door to higher education, we enable and encourage anyone of any age or background to pursue an education beyond high school. Dutchess Community College enrolls an impressive 38% of the county's college-bound high school graduates. It might seem like our students and alumni are everywhere. Well, just because they are. More, more of our county students attend Dutchess Community College than any other single educational institution anywhere. We are committed to keeping the college affordable through modest tuition and fee increases, comprehensive financial aid and financial literacy programs, along with privately funded scholarships and grants. Earlier this week, one of the college's major benefactors, Charlie Conklin, presented the DCC Foundation with a gift of $800,000 in memory of his late wife, Betty. The Conklins established a scholarship 11 years ago that enables students who graduate in the top 10% of their Dutchess County High School to attend this institution free of tuition and fees. <clears throat> More than 375 students have benefited from the scholarship, and the Conklin's now $2 million investment will ensure that there are resources to support motivated and gifted students at DCC for years to come. Charlie and Betty didn't do it for the recognition. They do it because they love our students and they wanted to help support our mission. Charlie is with us today, he's in the audience, and so please join me in thanking and recognizing his generosity. Diversity is also one of our core values because we believe that higher education has a moral imperative to foster an understanding of multiple cultures and an appreciation of the full range of individual differences within our society. It's more important than ever that our graduates are able to, ben to embrace the benefits of living and working in a diverse world. As educators, we are in a unique position to incorporate understanding throughout the curriculum, to model civil discourse in, in our classrooms, offices, and hallways, and to explore and celebrate differences and to demonstrate effective conflict resolution. Therefore, we will continue to diversify our faculty and staff, invite international students to study with us, support travel abroad programs for our students, and build on the success of the lecture supported by the Handel Family Foundation. We will bring more speakers, programs, and resources to campus that enlighten and challenge us to think differently, as our county executive, Mark Molinaro, would say so that we all feel more connected to and compassionate toward others. Another. 
it gives me a time to take some water. <laughs> Another one of our core values is collaboration. Returning to an earlier theme in my remarks, no one does it alone. Collaboration is an essential element of successful organizations. I have been working to ensure that everyone has a voice and a stake in the success of Dutchess Community College. We will create and utilize decision-making processes that are transparent and genuinely inclusive, and in doing so, enhance organizational effectiveness and job satisfaction while we cultivate a positive campus climate. We are establishing and maintaining strategic community partnerships through which intellectual, social, and financial resources can be leveraged to meet the needs of Dutchess County. For example, we are partnering with the City of Poughkeepsie School District, along with Central Hudson Gas and Electric and the Chase and Companies and SUNY New Pulse on a local P-TECH program. Students in the P-TECH program earn both a high school diploma and an associate's degree within six years without any cost to their families, and they benefit from workplace mentors, internships, and job opportunities. We especially value our SUNY New Pulse connection as it is the single most popular transfer school for our graduates, and their president, Don Christian, is here, and I thank you, Tom, for your collaboration. We are also looking to expand partnerships with other four-year institutions. We want to create more programs like Bridges to Excellence, which is designed to facilitate previously underprepared students transferred to and success at Marist College, the most popular private baccalaureate institution for DCC graduates. And we also collaborate with Vassar College. Just last month, a joint delegation of Dutchess Community College students and Vassar students joined thousands of others at the 2015 National Model United Nations in New York City. Our group, Dutchess Community College and Vassar, working side to side under the leadership of two of our Dutchess Community College faculty, won the Outstanding Delegation Award, as well as seven Outstanding Position Paper Awards. Thank you, Kathy Hill, for being here, too. We believe there also is unlimited potential for mutually beneficial partnerships with community-based organizations. By working with local agencies, we can offer the talents of our faculty, staff, and students, even a president, to meet community-identified needs and foster student engagement in applied learning settings. We plan to develop a center for civic and community engagement that will facilitate effective and sustainable relationships with a full range of community organizations. As a first step, we recently joined New York Campus Compact, an organization of college and university presidents committed to integrating student public service into the curriculum. The Compact will assist us this summer to link the needs of community organizations with our curriculum and student learning outcomes. I know there are friends from several local nonprofits here. I'd like you to please stand. Would our community nonprofit organizations please stand? <laughs> You will be hearing from us. <laughs> Ultimately, every DCC student will have multiple opportunities to apply what they are learning in our classrooms to the broader community. Through service and applied learning, we will cultivate lifelong habits of civic engagement and volunteerism in our graduates. And finally, I'm sure you liked hearing that word. <laughs> and finally, we chose accountability as one of our five institutional values to underscore our recognition that as a public institution, we have an obligation to be good stewards of scarce public resources. We must be tireless in our commitment to consistently improve outcomes for students and to do so with creativity and innovation. So you see, our institution will always be a college in the making, continuously striving to be a better community resource and asset, and guiding our decision making and my leadership as president of the college will be our four core values. In closing, 
I'd like to share one of my most enduring first impressions of Dutchess Community College, and that is that it sits majestically on the top of a hill. Yeah, the, the people who laughed are the ones who walked up the steps. <laughs> well, <clears throat> this idea of it being at the top of the hill, it reminded me of the reflections of John Winthrop. He's a New England immigrant who, upon approaching the port city of Boston, where he and his fellow passengers intended to launch a new social compact and become a model for future settlements in the new world, Winthrop addressed his shipmates and said, we shall be as a city upon a hill. The eyes of all people are upon us. Well, we welcome your eyes upon Dutchess Community College, and we hope you share our excitement about what's in the making here. And as you've heard earlier, this is our community. This is our college. This is our future. And I thank you for being here today. <laughs> Pamela, would you please come to the podium? Yes, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> She's like walking around with a rock star. Yeah, that's how I feel. If, if I spend enough time with her, I'm going to develop a self-confidence problem. <laughs> anyway, um, Pamela, uh, it's a great pleasure to carry to be with you today. Uh, you've heard the public here has heard a lot about you and your ability to connect with people and to identify opportunities for linkages that make our campus and community stronger. And it's already strong, and she's going to build on much success. Our new president builds bridges, and as chairman of the board, I am delighted to present Pamela with a gift in comm commemoration of this wonderful inaugural day. May these locally handcrafted bookends in the shape of the Mid-Hudson Bridge and inscripted with Pamela R. Eddington, President, in today's day always serve as a reminder of this meaningful occasion and symbolize our community's official welcome to you. And I want to congratulate you, and it's a sincere pleasure to get to know you and to get to work with you. You're the best. <laughs> And as we prepare to leave in the aura and the spirit of community, I ask that you stand for the benediction and invite the Reverend Kale Berger to the podium. <coughs> and finally, <laughs> blessings abound, and we need them. And we're all privileged to be here today. So go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Show honor to all. The holy commission and blessing is offered to all in attendance here today, and may the blessing remain with you and with your newly inaugurated president for all the days to come. And all the people said, 
Amen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated and stay seated for the academic recessional. We invite you to join us at a reception for Dr. Eddington in the Greenspan Dining Room in Drumlin Hall. We also extend our appreciation to the Presidential Inaugural Committee, Barbara Hugo and Carol Gordon, to the Presidential Search Committee, chaired by former trustee Vincent DeMasso, and to the employees, students, volunteers, and friends who all worked so hard to make this event memorable. And thank you for coming once again to celebrate our community, our college, and our future. Will those in the academic processional, recessional, please stand? <laughs>